Manchester, home to the University of Salford. Now home to possibly the largest student presidential election debate in history. Candidates fighting for your votes. Live from Media City. This is the University of Salford presidential election debate 2018. Good evening and welcome to the first ever University of Salford presidential election debate. Tonight, seven candidates are fighting for your votes in order to become the next president of our Students' Union. An array of candidates join us in the studio tonight and over the next 60 minutes they will debate live in front of our studio audience and to our viewers. Tonight's agenda will see our candidates tackle some of the most important issues to face us as not only students of Salford University but also as students nationally. Questions have been kept under wraps until tonight and the candidates do not know which questions will be asked. They will receive questions from both ourselves and from our studio audience which have been randomly selected on a variety of topics that affect us all. So our 2018 presidential election candidates are Tommy King, comedy writing and performance. Tom Booth, English and Drama. Samuel Abeggy, Economics and Business. Kobe Afori, Real Estate and Property Management. And Yana Roberts, International Business with Law. You can follow a running commentary and discussion of tonight's debate online using the hashtag SuPed2018. You can also join in the debate by tweeting your comments and questions by using the hashtag as well. Uh, now, the candidates will each have two minutes to tell us why they should be your next president. So, let's start with you, Tommy. So, my name is Tommy King and I am running to be your president. Um, I've been a student here at Salford for three years and I've worked as a supervisor at the student bar for two years. Um, in my two years at Atmosphere, I have had daily interactions with our customers, our students, and probably most of you guys in the audience. So I've listened to you all vent about your problems, and I've vented about my own, and I've taken those problems and those needs and put them into my manifesto. So I've put most of my time, passion, and motivation into the Students' Union, union doing something that I love, and I feel like now it's time for me to do bigger and better things. So I am running to be your president, not just for myself, but for each and every student at Salford University. I am running for closer attention to bettering mental health, a safer Salford, improved accommodation, and uh, free sports and societies, which ultimately is uh, more financial stability for our students. <clears throat> uh, the first step to change is admitting that you need it, and uh, you need someone that will fight for that, and I am sitting right here. So vote Tommy King for president. Amazing, thank you very much. Right, we'll move on to you. Can you beat that amazing two minutes? I'll try my best. Hi everyone, my name is Tom Booth. I'm in my third year studying English and Drama at Salford and I've volunteered for, for the past two years as a Team Salford Activator. I've also represented the university nationally at Pole Vault. Now, I've seen firsthand and experienced the problems that are affecting students the most and I believe it's important now more than ever that we come together in a positive manner and tackle real issues that are affecting people we need to A, prioritise mental health accessibility, B, prioritise more funding to our sports facilities, and C, create more, create more opportunities to come together through socials and evening events. We are Salford, one of the most diverse university communities in the country, and I want to lead us in a direction of peace, love and unity, but most importantly, success. Brilliant, thank you very much for that. Now, can you give us your manifesto? Hi, good evening. In the few weeks and days leading to this campaign, I've thought about my past, I've thought about the future, I've thought about you, I've thought about me, and I've thought about the global world. I've thought about the good and the bad news that we've seen on news, and I've thought about the story that's going to start this beginning. The story of change, ambitious change, and the change that we all want to see and be in the world. It always seems impossible. This is a saying of Nelson Mandela, and he showcased courage, passion, strength, 
and fight for what he believes in. I also do. But lately, a lot of things have happened. Strike, Brexit, uncertainty, economic instability, environmental issues, racism, security, and many other problems that we all face in the world. We encounter this nationally and even internationally. Students learning in school what, and dealing with debt while they study. Health students are not assured of their future. And it all seems like we don't know where we're going, even up to Theresa May herself. The world and, we peop and the people that live in it that I love so much are entrapped. Everyone we know, everyone I know here, know that I stand for Africa. But I believe that we, if we must grab every opportunity to stand for value and make impact wherever we are. We can change the course of history with fair and new policies, engagement, open minds, open doors, and ambition, and even ambitions that are always achievable. I got into education politics to fight for young people and their future, to fight for what I believe in, to fight for your voice, the change that we want to be and see, for a better and new education system, our security, our welfare, our environment, our community, and our future and the generation future that's coming along. So let's do this. Well done. Thank you very much. Great stuff. Thank you. <laughs> and yourself. Um, hi, uh, my name is Kobe Ofori, and I'm your current vice president you know, for science and technology. And you know, I've been involved in the student movement. I am originally from Ghana, and I got here as an international student. I've been in, involved in the student movement for the past two years. You know, I started off as a school rep, um, library champion, international students officer, NUS delegate representing so forth at the national level, and also your current sabbatical office now. Um, tell me, name it, and I'll tell you about it, because um, I think I have the experience um, and expertise to be able to, you know, help solve student issues, because that's what I've been doing um, all these years, and I have really enjoyed it. It's been a real, a real privilege for me. And in this role, I've been able to represent students from diverse groups, you know, in my volunteer and my current role. And, you know, I believe I've done this because um, I think, you know, issues around faith, gender, color, and, and, and race should not divide us, but they should rather bring us together to fight this common cause that we, 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 we are on as students and promote um, student activism. Uh, because in this role, I've also been able to um, chop some successes as well. Um, I've been able to organize the first ever plagiarism awareness campaign um, because I think issues around plagiarism are key to students and we cannot you know, continue to sit down and, and, and for students to lose their marks and, and fall prey to um, issues around plagiarism. Um, you also told me about your housing issues and I was able to launch a housing survey to dig into what the problems really are and how best we can support students in this area. So we have it done now, we're taking it a step further. We're gonna do and uh, working towards the housing accreditation scheme, which is the main um, aim. Um, I've also um, led on several issues you know, around Black History Month and you know, inclusive events to make sure that you enjoy your life here and so forth. It's all about you making sure you enjoy your life as well. For that's what I'm about, um, vote Kobe. Number yeah, one. that's great. Thank you very much. Thank you for that. Thank you. Right. And finally, we've got Yana. Hello. <coughs> Excuse me, my, my cold. Um, thank you very much. I've been privileged now. All, all these, uh, you know, outstanding candidates. And thank you for having me. Uh, yes, my name is Yana Roberts, and I'm your hopefully future president. And I am an international business student with law. And um, what I try to say, and actually maybe try to do, uh, first of all, I will try to do my best. And I'm here for the students, because I believe every student does matter. Uh, so after the careful research, um, I actually found this university to be the best place, uh, not just for me, for many, for many students, and not just for home students, uh, which it's everyone know it's welcome many many international students here so when i have been um, as a volunteer for many many years not many many years but few at, at least so i have this experience and understand uh, i think i have that benefit to understanding the background of how you study in uk and 
what you're looking for, uh, British values, um, what you can do, what you can do best, and how it can be benefit you in your future life. So now I'm here uh, with my culture and arts background to study international business. It's, it's a huge step for me, and I am enjoy every second of it. So now I'm here at Salford University to share my incredible experience and inspire others to continue to learn. And every, like I said, in every voice, it should be heard. And once, why? Just because we want to reach the satisfaction. And why? Because we want to reach satisfaction in every level. Then, two, able to get the best outcome with the goals and objectives. And that's so, your thank two you minutes. Very so much. Thank you very much, Anna. Thank you, all candidates. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, great. <laughs> Yeah, some, some great manifestos there. But we're about to take a short break now and we'll be seeing you in a few minutes. Echo Africa aims to change the economy of Africa and secure a bright future for Africans all over the world. Echo Africa for me is to create knowledge, share opportunities and sustain impact. Join us on this journey as we explore the progressive and innovative society that is Echo Africa. Welcome back to the Salford Union presidential election debate. Right, you've heard our candidates' opening statements, but now it is time to hear about what they think of your student union. So here's our first question. University tuition fees are on the rise and are set to increase year on year. According to some, we are working within a university where everything appears to be an extra. Students have been asking for more things to be included in their tuition fees, such as printing, reduced cafe prices and society memberships. So, I'm going to ask this question to the group here. Uh, is our university an expensive place to study? And how do you plan on giving students value for money? Tommy, I'll start with you. Um, our university, yes, just like most in the country, um, £9,000. Um, that's your set price. Um, <laughs> that's what you get, that's your set price. But no, yes, it is expensive. And that is why I suppose that us guys here are running um, for the presidential position to make sure that students do get their value for money. So one of my main points is to introduce free sports and societies um, and that is just a case of bettering the students sort of experience at university making sure that they are paying for something by, by the university. I know the union is separate because it's a non-profit non non-profitable charity but it's still part of the university so essentially yes it is expensive but it's our job to make sure that we're getting what we should be, sort of thing. Yeah, and you mentioned there that you want to get free uh, membership to societies. How do you plan on implementing that? Well, it's currently as it stands, the university provides the union with a block grant, um, and that is just under £1 million, I believe. Um, so in order to get free societies and um, free sports societies, we would need to ask for an increase in the block grant. Um, and then the sports societies could go and get sponsors and things like that to provide them with more money themselves. But yeah, we'd need to speak to the university and get a block grant increase through that. So is it going to be sports societies alone that you want to get for free or every society? Every society. That's my plan. And do you, what do you guys think? Do you think that's the right way to go about it? Getting value for money, getting free societies? I disagree with that point of view because I don't think the Salford University most expensive place. My my priority when I'm search, um, I'm search worldwide, and I'm look. Uh, I looked in London. I looked Leeds, uh, and I'm I'm end up here, and I found everything I need for that money. I think it's the best value. Uh, it's it's very welcome. Any ideas? It's on my <coughs> at my uh, program. Include this, and I'm trying to open society as well. Uh, of course, I will be considering any expenses, but I think for what we've got here is the best, for my opinion. And the tuition fees, actually, um, it's a very big issue when it comes to the, to the UK students. 
And I, I believe that the value that we're getting for the tuition fees that we get is not um, working properly. For instance, we know that um, in the UK right now, they've brought up the whole scrapping the school fees by the Labour Party, and they want to do that. But is it going to work for the students is what we need to review now. Um, Theresa May has brought up the review saying she wants to review all these things with you know, how the education brings value to students. But how do we get involved with that is what I'm passionate about. How do we make sure that these fees that we're paying is actually giving students the value they need to develop themselves and also develop the world that we're seeing right now? Um, getting them involved with, while I'm developing myself, I'm developing myself for the development of this world. So I'm not seeing that value. When it comes to printing, like you mentioned, um, the printing thing in Salford University could change, and I feel like it should change. There should be a quarter, there should be some sort of, um, give students maybe 200 papers every year as, as students, or maybe 300 papers, depending on however the budget works at the university, because it's all about breaking that even and making everything work fair for everybody. Um, societies, I feel like if societies need to raise some money for whatever they do as societies, then they should be able to work that out within themselves as the leaders of the society to make sure that whatever that they make the students pay for that can also supplement whatever the student's union is giving to the students to even support them in their society. So I think it would be balanced to do it that way. Students, um, you know, students came out to vote massively um, in the recent elections, and that should tell you how you know serious they take this funding issue. And now students being treated as customers, um, you know, we come for a particular service, and now we have strikes, and people are asking questions: What is the value that we're talking about here? You know, so that voice, that massive vote, has now secured an independent review in the higher education funding because. Now they know that this is serious and we need to do something about it. And it brings questions about you know, the teaching excellence framework because they introduced this um, for universities to be ranked you know, bronze, um, gold, and silver. I think we're not here to compete against for, for bronze and gold and silver, but we're actually looking for practical learning, work-based learning. And this is where I tie it into the university's ICZ strategy. How do we make learning more practicable and not just lecture slides on, on Blackboard that you go and sit down, you're bored, you want to just leave out, people don't want to come to school anymore. You know, that is why I am introducing something on um, student housing. And this student housing policy is going to tie in with the university's ICZ strategy um, because um, students from real estate and property management will be able to come in to the students' union and do internships and placements. And this is also what we, we, we're talking about university. And when we talk about university work-based learning, it ties into it straight away. So we need more policies like this. And um, to come down to Tom's um, um, very ambitious thing um, of um, getting free sport, I don't know about that, my brother. But what I'm going to say is, it does, it, it, for me, it's not realistic. You know, we cannot achieve that in a year. But what we can do is to ask for um, um, you know, more support for our um, you know, um, societies and sports clubs to be able to assess funding. How does the funding work? How do we make it more accessible to everybody? How do we make it more fair to everybody, more applicable? Because I sit on the societies and sports committee, and you know, societies and sports teams come in, they don't even know how to apply for the funding. It sits there waiting, but then people are not coming for it. How do we market it and make it more presentable? Um, that's what I'm going to do, and that's what you know, we're going to make sure that people know the really process. I think what's important to mention here, though, is that while tuition fees are something that irritate a lot of people regarding the mm. cost, you've got to remember that the repayment threshold has been increased recently to £25,000 a year. So you won't pay a penny back until you are earning £25,000 a year. I think what is a more crucial point of discussion regards equal opportunity, the fact that everyone deserves to go to university, regardless of their background, regardless of whether their parents is rich, poor, no, none of that should jeopardise your opportunities to succeed. And then regarding sports societies, I mean, it's, it's, it's very ambitious, the idea of having free societies and, and, and free communities, but I think we have to implement a sense of realism. And what needs to be done is, is have the right discussions between the university and the student union and get everyone on the same page with the same vision. Because right now, it feels like we've got conversations going on in different places. And obviously, there's a lot of agendas that people are trying to fill. So the responsibility of our role is going to be to push the, the, the agendas that we want. So it's all well and good saying that we're going to achieve free sports societies. But I think it's more important to sort of 
discuss how we're going to work towards that and work towards, for example, better sports facilities, which is something that I'm campaigning I'll, for. I'll bounce with that also um, from what everybody said and say also that uh, the depth of students that they're going into, um, I was doing the statistics and I saw the statistics lately, that um, the profit that we make in our lifetime um, being students is 100,000 pounds. So from getting education, you get 100,000 pounds in your lifetime. And your debt that you accumulate after you finish university is 50,000 pounds. Now, if 50,000 pounds has already gone off my life already before I even finish my whole lifetime, then I'm, I'm, I'm already living half of my lifetime just being in education. So I'm not getting the value of that. And I'm supporting the ICZ um, um, that Kobe's mentioned. is one thing that's very, very big in my heart about collaboration with, with, with people. Um, collaboration, students are not being put in the development of the world. I'm saying that now because we're being taught to go to school to get jobs, but we're not being taught to go to school to be part of the community, to be part of the collaboration of growth that's happening. I feel like even though you're paying these fees, I agree with that, the fairness of things, even though you're paying these fees, there should be some sort of apprenticeship scheme that from your first year of being a student at the university, you should start getting paid. I'm, I'm saying it's ambitious, but it's achievable. You should start getting paid. So you'd be able to pay for that sport so it wouldn't be free. You'd be able to pay for other things because then you're already participating the degree that you're doing and doing it in real life, in real life jobs. I, I was speaking to a student recently and they said to me that in BBC to get a job there, um, they have to go work in serving coffees first before they actually start to do the job. Now, that's, that's, not, that's not impressive. I feel like if you're already doing that job, if you're already learning that thing, you should already be participating in doing it while you're studying and be getting some money for it. For instance, the nurses, their bursaries have been cut up. They don't get no money for, for, for even helping us in the NHS. Now, that really touches my spirit because I live with one of them. I think we just you know? a bit over, so, over the access. Oh. <laughs> I'm just saying the whole, yes. the whole system of the tuition I'm agree, fee yes, but should be, again, should be, should be can we just re, re, re don't about we, we collaborate with the government as well. We, we can't consider completely free education. Uh, what, we have international students. Uh, we, we, in, we invest in ourselves. And it's just what, what are you believe in three, something three. So uh, how that will motivate you? I don't know. Yes, you say 50,000. It's the, the, the road you're choosing for yourself, your investment. To become a doctor, you need to spend oh, no, I'm, I'm, saying, I'm saying the 50,000 is what yeah. your debt that you accumulate. But yes. you're, you're, and then I know the international students are, are, are paying so more. So how, how do you see collaboration with the But I'm saying that if you start your university in, from your first year, you should already be involved in a local and international development. That, that is why you're studying that. Because it's either you're studying it for your passion or you're studying it for you to be part of a growth of the community. So that sort of thing should yeah. be the development process mm -hmm. for the ICZ and even other things that are in Salford no, no, University that's, that's at the moment. Away. Yeah. Yes, the whole away. conversation about you know, free education, um, you know, I sit on the um, NUSHE Zones Committee and you know, the current vice president just launched an agenda you know, for free education. It sounds very ambitious, but you know, education is a public good, just like you know, Tom said, and it is something that we all need to work towards and make sure that it happens. But then it ties back into this um, you know, strike action that we're currently seeing from our lectures. Our pen the pensions are being cut, and you know, I fully support you know, the fact that they need to stand up for their rights, and they need to speak up and be heard. But then students also have that right, you know, to also ask for uh, um, um, money back and, and reimbursement because now you're treating us as customers. And so we should also have a right to come and say, hey, why, where, is the, where is the contact hours that we're supposed to have? You know, if, for instance, international students, if you're paying around like you know, 18,000 pounds to come and study here and you, you, you're missing over like a month loss of contact hours, that is, that is going to hit you really hard. I've had a lot of international, come, uh, international students come to me and say, hey, what are we doing about this? You know, I think we should also let, you know, put pressure on the university, and, th and that's why I recommend what some, um, 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 you know, um, students are doing, like, you know, um, to support the strike and also give um, students a platform, because we need to form a uh, force university to put pressure on the universities UK to have a conversation with UCU, you know, to sit down back at the table and make sure that, you know, student lives are not being jeopardized, because it, that's what it looks like right now. Yeah. Well, Tom, I'm just going to come to you quickly because yeah. you've been quite quiet on this uh, subject and you yeah. opened up the idea that you want to get <laughs> free societies. How, after, after what you've heard from the other candidates, how would you respond to that? Well, obviously, it 
Free Society, there's something that I've looked into and um, none of you guys have specifically. I know you've looked at sports yes. facilities and stuff like that. But um, as it stands right now, um, there are three universities which currently offer free sports and societies, and that's Essex, Buckinghamshire, and Brunel University. Um, there's many reasons why I personally vouch for free sports and societies, and that's why that's something I want to implement if I'm voted president. It's got benefits. It says here, 150 minutes a week of exercise is a viable way to, to treat depression and anxiety. Um, in 2016, 82% of students agreed that sports improves mental health. But it's not just that, it's academic achievement as well. Public Health England demonstrated that a positive association between academic attainment and physical activity. The Sport and Recreation Ali Alliance reports that taking part in a physical acti activity positively positively affects cognition, releasing hormones, neurotransmitters and a protein responsible for learning, memory and higher thinking. And then obviously employability as well, books, which is the British universities and college sports, stated that 94% of employers identified the link between sports and valuable skills. So that's your leadership, organisation, time management and team working. And I think it's important, the universities here that are currently still offering free sports, before they offered free sports they had 1,800 members in their sports society, 1,800 altogether in their sports societies. After introducing free sports, they had 3,000. In Buckinghamshire, there was a 500 increase after introducing free sports. And in Brunel, there was a 1,200 increase. So offering these free sports, that's giving all of these students these benefits that is essentially going to better their experience as a student and better their health and well-being. And if that's... You know, um, not to cut you, um, you know, but I think... To get to free sports is all where we all, we all want to get to. But to start with, you know, you mentioned the university's block grant that they give us. Yeah. And all our money is being currently going into sports. What about societies? What about atmosphere? It has it, to survive. Yeah, it's and and, and wait, I'm saying, that's, that's, what, that's what I'm saying, that right now we need to get university to provide the facilities that our sports teams need to train. Because right now we are outsourcing most of our you know, facilities at like MMU, Manchester Uni, and we have to pay for all these things. But then if we get university to provide those facilities, then we are working towards free sports. Yep. So, you know, that, that is where I would start from. But okay. then not go straight yeah. up and say, I feel like, like you know, most free of the sports. the statistics that you've said there um, all sound relating to sports. And I, I stand for that. I stand for people doing sports to enhance themselves mentally and even physically. Um, but other societies at the University of Salford deals with other problems. For instance, I. I created the Echo Africa Society, yeah. and it, it's supposed to, to, to empower people and empower entrepreneurs to in, involve in the environment, community, and organization, which is what the Echo stands for, of their community. I know it starts with Africa, but it could be something that could be done in Salford, Echo Salford, Echo Manchester, and then we start to put ourselves into doing the things that are happening there. This is a society, but it could be bigger than a society. I, I accept sports, but like I said, there should be free sports, like Kobe said, if you partner up with the university and get them to enhance what the sport is of the university, that would be better. But I think other societies should, cannot be free because they're not putting the funding that should be put in, in those societies. They're all putting it into sports because there's no, there's no funding for it. So I agree, but at the same time, we should, we should. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, we could talk about this all day yeah. and you could just go on and on. Uh, but no, that's great. Great points raised by you guys there. Um, so that's what they think. Uh, but what, let me know what you think. Let us know using the hashtag SuperHead2018. And we will be right back after this. The milkman, the paper boy, evening TV. Did I get delivered here? Somebody tell me, please. So what? find out more of what I'm gonna do follow me on Instagram Twitter snapchat Facebook at USSU underscore Eustace
the science and technology officer in the elections this March. Please give me a vote. Wait. My name's Gloria and you should vote for me for health sciences because I'm going to make a real change. Health sciences and social care, you know, we are a forgotten campus but I'm going to make sure that we are remembered. We can be the change too. Welcome back to the Silver University presidential election debate. I'm Joe Wilmot and we continue tonight with an audience question. Now candidates, you will need to provide a brief and concise response directly answering the question. Don't want to hear any of this uh, politicians avoiding the question. Rubbish, don't want any of that. And uh, first of all tonight we go to Brooke who is a first year photography student. Uh, Brooke, what is your question? Thank you. Mental health amongst university students is an issue and gaining traction across the country. Many universities have recognised the fact that they are not just educational institutions, but have a responsibility beyond the grades. What is your stance on mental health across the campuses and what do you have in place to help? 
So, candidates, mental health across campuses, a uh, serious issue. What plans do you guys have in place? Kobe, we're going to come to you first. Right. Um, I think mental health is a serious issue that um, you know, I take personally um, serious and the Students' Union also take you know, seriously because one out of you know, four um, students or people that you meet will have issues with mental health, um, which is why I have good news for you, really, because um, the sabbatical officer for health and social science, Emily, is doing a drop-in centre um, currently that she's about to launch and this is also to provide a hub where students can go for um, support and for welfare so that you can talk to somebody you know you don't have to speak to um, 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 you have to speak to people that you are comfortable um, um, and then also promote university facilities around mental health and that's why I'm also working on you know parking because students are getting tickets all around campus and it's affecting mental health because if you have 150 pounds to pay you know, it's a big problem that you, it's affecting your mental health, affecting your studies. So more awareness on, on, on mental health and Emily's, you know, drop-in centre to provide support for you. Perfect. Lovely. Thank you very much. Uh, Jan, we're going to come to you next. Right. Uh, where, where, where's the problem begun? You know, where you need to understand where actually it's come from. Why, why is the mental um, issues? What, what is going on? So probably when the students, they feel a bit is isolated or they come in from home country and UK which they enjoy the study but again they need to find the right path where they can engage themselves where they can um, actually sh uh, show their talents so that's my first uh, um, I don't know f probably first point that's when I'm uh, writing my manifesto is engagements between any department so we will know so that department might need attention most and and I create society where s a students can come to you and actually say look I've got a talent I'm I'm a star at my home country I want to represent here something so yes well we'll see perfect yeah. lovely thank you very much uh, Tommy let's come to you next um, yeah going back to the free sports again there's other ways um, with dealing with mental health other than just uh, sitting and talking to someone um, I've been through, uh, I've had mental health issues myself and I know it's not as easy as just going in to the union and talking to someone who has probably never experienced what you've been through. I know that that's not the case and that's why most people go without actually speaking like to someone professional etc. So I suppose it is just a case of like Kobe said, Emily has launched a drop-in centre um, and that's already been quite successful with the amount of volunteers it's got and that's just speaking to like-minded individuals. So I suppose it's just um, making sure that there is um, sort of things in place for that. So yeah. Perfect. Uh, Tom, let's come to you next. Mental health, it's something that needs action now. Like the health and safety of, of students at the university is one of the university's paramount concerns. Not enough is being done currently. Current waiting lists at the university for counselling are three months and you're only fast-tracked if you mention the word suicide. Now, I'm, I'm sorry, but that is, that is too late. It should, it, we should be providing support and assistance much earlier in the process of someone that's stressed, depressed, suffering from sleep disorders. What is currently provided online also, I believe, is insufficient and we can't wait until it's too late. We need to review, firstly, our counselling system look at ways that we can cut down waiting lists, start the discussion, start the conversations. And obviously that's more of a long-term goal, but if we're looking at the short term, we need to facilitate greater accessibility online towards support. If you go online currently, there's the drop-in centre, of course, but I believe that we need to be giving more funding to the drop-in centre more, more in, and developing more initiatives. If, if you go online now and look at wellbeing or mental health on, on our union website, it's quite... It's, it's not very sort of compassionate. There's sort of a, a, a description of, of what depression and anxiety is and then a list, to, a, a list of links or, or emails to the Samaritans, different charities. Uh, more support needs to be provided. And if, if I was elected, I'd look at integrating sort of... I, I've had this idea of integrating free well-being uh, meditation and yoga sessions into the budget because I believe that mental health is something that is absolutely integral to part of the university experience because as, mm. as Kobe's mentioned it's well known that one in four students currently suffer from mental health and we need to act now before it's too late. So would you say that the union just putting all of these things on the website is just a way of ticking a box? Are they, do you think they're actually doing enough? I mean it comes down everything seems to boil down to funding doesn't it? But at the end of the day, 
like if if someone was to commit suicide, it would be an absolutely tragic event. Like we need to act now. More funding because it's it's such a crucial issue. More funding needs to be directed towards mental health support, and it needs to be done sooner rather than later. Perfect. Lovely. Thank you very much. And uh, Sam, let's come to you, Ross. Um, I I support mental health uh, at Salford University, and from statistics, because I was reading about this recently. A um, hundred and fifty percent increase in the Salford in Salford University students are going to counselling. That's a very massive increase of students going to counselling. So actually, Salford is actually doing a lot of things. There's more awareness about it. Um, for instance, Emily's doing something about it. Um, there's less stigma to it, so people are not ashamed to actually talk about their mental health now. So I actually see that there is actually something being done about mental health issue. Uh, my stance on it is that. I feel that we should build resilience, and that's one thing as the president I will do. Build resilience in people to understand what it is to actually overcome their mental health. And as I'm passionate about development, I keep talking about that, developing yourself, if we don't start to develop young people for whatever they're going to face in the world, then even doing the mental health thing is not growing anywhere. So developing resilience would be something I would push more in mental health students that we should do at Salford. Not, like you said, taking the box and just saying, oh, we've done this, ask us, come in here and speak to us, but actually developing them to be resilient to whatever it is that is mental health that they're facing. And, and, and just to add to that, you know, um, I just want to add that, you know, the university already has a lot of um, systems in place. and. I want, uh, what I would do is to also promote more awareness because there are so many facilities available on, com on campus. For instance, you have the wellbeing department, they are always holding drop-in sections, they are holding um, classes for students, you know, one-on-one -on -one drop in sessions. So it's all about promoting what is already there too so that more people know about it so they can go and get support when they need it. But cool. I'm still saying the support is increasing. Lovely. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, just before we move on to our next question. Uh, we've uh, still got the hashtag up, hashtag uh, SUPED2018. Uh, Please uh, be sending in your tweets how you think the debate is going so far, who you think is perhaps uh, your current favourite and who you're most likely to vote for. Uh, but also send in your comments. And uh, if you have any questions as well, we'll be getting those throughout the show and we'll see if we can fit them in towards the end. So make sure you use the hashtag, hashtag SUPED2018, hashtag SUPED2018. Uh, right, okay, we're now moving on to a question regarding the strikes, which is uh, a serious issue facing the university at the moment. Um, you will each have about 60 seconds to a minute 30 to answer these, all right? So nice, short, concise, uh, concise answers for us. So lecturers are striking for cuts to their pensions. Uh, many students are missing out on essential contact hours and essentially losing money. Uh, universities such as Durham, Warwick and UEA are facing student campaigns uh, demanding their money back or for reimbursement. Now, the question is, do you agree with the striking? And what is your stance on students being reimbursed for uh, money and hours last? Uh, we're going to start with Jana on this one. Oh, thank you for that. Um, I, n to be honest, it's not affect me whatsoever. I uh, feel sorry for those who is actually get across in that. So I'm, I'm, I hope everything going to be just sorted because, uh, like my colleague said, uh, everything here for you, for Salford, from Salford University, your tutors, you have to speak to your department. I have extremely helpful uh, personal tutor. He's always on the email. Just do contact, whatever you need to do, just do it because uh, it, just not keep for yourself. Uh, come in to see uh, professionals, come in to see tutors, uh, everything uh, have a solution and it's going to be sorted on the end of the Perfect. day. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much, Kobe. Yeah, thank you very much. You know, just like I said before, I think it's completely unacceptable that if we have been treated as customers, we are losing the kind of service that we suppose or we deserve. You know, um, I think that we should also sit down and um, we should put pressure on the university um, to put pressure on you, UK, to sit down with UCU, there's always, you know, when you sit down at the table and negotiate, it's always better than standing up, you know, on strike. And that is what we should do. We should put pressure on them to be able to, to nail that. And the SU has released a press statement on this one. And we are asking very important questions because we think students should also be compensated. And, you know, you sign the clause when you come into university and say, hey, uh, your money uh, cannot be reimbursed. But then we're saying that, it, there's a clause there that says that you know in most on um, um, in some in circumstances that are not very you know um, 
um, you know, in circumstances that um, are very rare, like a strike like this is happening in seven years. So that means that, you know, it is their right to be able to ask for it. And we are the SU, the five sabbatical officers, we are asking very important questions that, listen, this needs to stop and the university needs to take a, an action and even communicate to students more um, on, on what they're going to do about this problem. Perfect. Lovely. Sam? Um, well, I, I, I stand with the campaign. I agree with it. I, I think I, I, I'm passionate about the future of everybody, so I'm also passionate about the future of um, older generation. So if my teachers are going to be old eventually and you're going to take away their money, I'm passionate about that. So I stand with them. So for instance, I'm going to be standing with the campaign tomorrow um, um, at, the, at the student union for, to support our teachers in solidarity. Um, but my stance on students getting their fees back, I think that should be a thing that we should um, think about as assessing altogether and think about the economic instability that we're all facing. The in economic instability that the whole world is facing is massive. So if we start to look at it from that big point of view, we'll see that if they're taking these people's money, our teachers, for instance, six oh, but, billion. But if, six, you are, six, if six, you are a student and you're paying, for instance, international I'm, student, you're paying eighteen thousand uh, pounds. Well, I'm, are you I'm, saying that? I'm, that I'm, think, I'm, th I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I'm giving your money back. I'm thinking what are you aggregately. Saying? I'm no. thinking aggregately. I'm not thinking only about the international students. I'm thinking about the international students and no, also the home students, students as well. They yeah. pay nine thousand pounds. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. I, I okay, understand. Guys, perfect. Oh. Lovely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, you didn't let me finish, but okay. Okay. Moving on. I mean. Strikes and unions, and <laughs> it's not something I know a huge amount on to make a justifiable comment, but what I will say is that I believe that as students we should stand together, united, behind, and, and, and start the right discussions and stand behind our university. You know, I know that a lot of people have been emailing and trying to speak to the vice chancellors and sort of setting in motion the, the right sort of conversations surrounding it, but as I say, I, I don't think I know enough about it to make a justifiable comment. Okay, not a problem at all. Uh, and Tommy? Yeah, to be fair, I'm pretty much the same as Tom. Um, obviously, I support it completely. I mean, these lecturers being left 10K a year worse off. Um, and yeah, like I said, like it was mentioned earlier, in education, we are essentially consumers. So we should be able to get our money back for these. Well, maybe not me, because it's not affected me as a student myself, but it's affected people around. Uh, around the UK and if we're treated as consumers in education yeah. and they're not having any contact time which they've paid £9,000 for mm. then yes they should be able to get the money Absolutely. back because that's they've paid for a service and they're not getting that service mm. it's like me paying for a taxi and then him not turning up yeah. you know what I mean I, I I'd be few men. nice I don't, I don't nice agree. analogy there okay, okay lovely all right um, on to, uh, just very briefly, uh, get that hashtag in, hashtag SUPED2018. Get your tweets in and your comments. We'll be showing them on the screen throughout the show. We'll see you very shortly. Otto Kahn, the hallmarks of a great government. <laughs> When you vote in March, it is your opportunity to step forward and join me on the second part of our journey to fight for a safer Salford, a stronger union and a quality that's prioritised. Hello, my name is Jerome and I'm running for Science and Technology Officer. This is because I envision a student's union that is progressive, proactive, dependable and welcoming. That we vitalize a creative and intellectually stimulating environment. Let's do it. Together we can. Hi, would you like more funding for your academic projects and scientific research? Or more opportunities to work on exciting internships and placements? And not only your problems, but your ideas to be heard at the union. Zimbabwe Karim, because together we can make a change. Together we can.
Welcome back to the final part of tonight's debate. I'm Josh Kelly. Tonight, five of the seven presidential candidates are joining us to debate out some of the most important topics currently facing us students. We move on now to our final audience question of the evening, and that is Ben, who is a second year graphic design student. Hi, uh, I believe that minority groups and their representation on campus is a concern. How do you plan to ensure better representation across all campuses for all communities? Okay, so Tommy, if we start with you. Um, better representation, so as a gay man myself, obviously I know that it is a problem. I mean, I had some trainers on um, last week and I was walking through campus and they've got these little like flag things on here and I was getting some funny looks, funny looks all the way through campus and that made me feel quite like, do you know what I mean? I've never really mm. experienced that before and I've never really been treated as a minority before for being gay, but that still made me like, this isn't on sort of thing. Um, obviously, in my manifesto, I've planned on um, relaunching the Rainbow Laces campaign. Um, again, that links in with my sports, so getting that to across all sports societies to show representation for the LGBT community. And as well, um, This Girl Can campaign, um, which represents women across the UK participating in sports, um, basically shows them and tells them not to fear judgment and um, that sort of thing. So yeah, yeah, that's how I'd go about it by making sure that those... Brilliant. Thank you. Tom? I mean, I think that I'm not from a minority myself, but I personally believe that one of the best ways to create unity and engage students across our campus is through social events, because currently we've got a lot of sort of community societies, but the way I look at it is they're all quite separate, and pe like I myself wouldn't necessarily integrate with a, an Islamic society or a Nigerian society, because right now there's no opportunity for us to integrate so I believe that if we create more social events there's more opportunity for us to come together and and celebrate life integrate meet people and I, personally I think that's the best way to sort of tackle equality on our campus Tom thank you very much Sam um, I, I, I keep standing for the development like I keep talking about um, I am passionate about young people I'm passionate about social justice um, welfare impact and all these things in the young people um, when it comes to representing now I personally go to a lot of event that has to do with what goes on in Salford instantly itself and I think that getting students involved in that would be a good representation I represent getting students involved in what is happening in their city what is happening in the nation and what's happening even internationally um, um, Better community creation, you know, um, when you come to the LGBT now, make sure that those, those communities are better represented. Um, when it comes to the black minority, make sure that they're represented properly. Well, I, I, well, for instance, I created Echo Africa. I would say that now, that I created that society so that everybody can be involved in what is happening right now in the growth of Africa's economy. Sorry, so I'm going to have to cut off there yeah, if that's okay. That's fine. Yeah, Kobe? But, yeah, um, straight up, um, I'll just say student support and mentorship, you know, for our disabled students. For instance, if you go to the library, the accessible doors are so, like, it's very heavy. You cannot even open it. This is where we need to start looking at it so that people can move freely. Accessibility is very important for our disabled students. Things like women empowerment, you know, right? Uh, recently, they, they had a women's celebration, women's award. This is, you know, empowering women and celebrating their achievements is something that we need to push, you know, further. Our BME groups are now standing up, you know, myself sitting here and, you know, several officers in the past have all won elections and people like Sam also coming through the ranks, you know. It shows that we are working and our societies and BME societies are now very involved in the union and we should very much, you know, long may it continue. And, and social events, just like uh, Tom um, said, to bring people together so we can, you know, socialize and mingle and get to understand each other and then also provide a safe space where people can live their, their lives irrespective of their gender. I think, you know, everybody should have equal rights. Thank you so much. Yana. Thank you so much. Who is asking this question? Can I just see that person? Thank you so much because that's my manifesto and that's oh. what I'm going to do. First of all is engagement between, between sectors at any department. Bring the te theory and the practical experience. Then bring the best from every individual. Share your achievement with others. And what is your talent? Come along and share your knowledge. That's, that's my manifesto. Wow. Thank you so much. Wow. Yes, that's what There's I no said. I'm, I'm agree with you. Things. You said... How you are you actually going to achieve equality? I said before, I, I have my society. Yes, so well, I have to bring if, them here. If all here. our societies sit 
completely separately from one another, like people aren't going to integrate with them. We need to create more opportunities for people to come together. Like, for I'm example, here. Oh, that's, when that, our I'm Islamic here, Society you. put yes, on, I put I on food stores, it's speak. a fantastic opportunity yes, for people to integrate So I'm the here, culture. that's what the presidents do, maybe what the leaders do, because you sit down and listen. So that's why we're here. We sit down and we actually have opportunity to talk to the right person, so how your idea can be heard. We need and action, yes. not and, talk. And that's does, does that's the that then together, we can, we can do that together. Speaking how to can your, I do myself? Yeah. S sorry, speaking to your issue, you know, about socializing and, and getting people involved, that's where international society comes in. This is a platform where students can, you know, yeah. socialize irrespective of wherever you All come right. from and whichever group you're part of. off there, sorry. At the moment. So, now, uh, thank you very much for that. Now we move on to the candidates' as closing statements of the night. The candidates each have 60 seconds for the closing statements, and we'll start again with Jana. Thank you again. So, uh, I just recently watched BBC Politics. I don't want to talk about politics a lot, but they bring the quality to our study. I would say what we can do. We, we're not going to say about... Um, Immigrants, we're going to say about how, how about the cultural exchange? How, how about to bring talents to here and do something now from excellent facilities? Uh, going to engage in sport department, going to engage in with other departments like Storm said, and you, you, all, you all agree with me, I think. So just to do our best and uh, bring the quality to your study. Thank you Thank very you much. Thank you very much, Kobe. Um, thank you very much. And what I'm going to end with is, you know, all I stand for is to ensure that we have a software that is inclusive, that is diverse, that people can live their life and, you know, by our slogan, enjoy, love your life at Salford. So we need to run campaigns, you know, that will get free parking for students and we need to work around that to see how best we'll be able to make it. We need to run campaigns that will speak to you know the ridiculous prices of food on campus it is very ridiculous people are talking about it left right center and it's about time we do something about it we need to provide more well-being and support mental health for students that is what i stand for more um, um you know for our liberation groups to make sure that they can also come out and then stand up for elections that is what we want to see an inclusive a united and solid so forth thank you very much thank you very much sam um Thank you so much. Um, I stand for a lot of futuristic growth. I stand for a lot of development. I stand for um, engagements. I stand for people, students and young people getting involved in the local and international world. And I would say there's a lot of situations going on. I will say we all have to come together and together do this and form an action that can actually create results for myself, for the future of my children, the future of our generations to come, and for our generation as we live in now. So I'm saying, vote Sam, and let's together do this. Well, thank you very much, Sam. Tom, to you. Where's my camera? People, tonight, you've heard a lot of talk. University of Salford students, with me, you'll get, a sense, you'll get realism and action not talk. There are two limitations we've got to remember everything it, that it always boils down to. Finance and communication, or rather a lack of communication. Heads of the university and the student union have long lists of agendas, so if we want to get anything done, we have to emphasise our student voice. If elected, I would make it my responsibility to look at the top priorities affecting students the most and bring everyone onto the same page, sharing the same vision. No sweeping statements about achieving this and that, but back things up with what we want to achieve with real plans of action. Thank you. Tommy, your closing statement. So, yeah, I think we all here want to do best for the students, and it's just, I suppose, who you actually want to vote to. So, basically, vote for me if you want closer attention to bettering mental health facilities, a safer campus, a more liberated students' union, and uh, for free sports and societies, which ultimately is financial stability. But most importantly, vote for me because you want to vote for me and not because you're having an iPad thrown in your face during election week.
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all very much for watching this evening. Thank you all for watching at home, wherever you are, on the internet or here. Uh, thank you very much to our studio audience as well. You've been fantastic. <laughs> uh, make sure you keep sending in your tweets, hashtag SUPED2018. That's all from us here. Goodbye. Thank, thank you. you. Goodbye. Good job. Cheers. 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 Cheers.